Hello everyone, welcome back to our Rhino tutorial. Today we're going to introduce how to model a camera in Rhino. So let's bring our reference photo first. And before that, let's check the unit. And let's be crazy, set the absolute tolerance to 0 0.00001, which is very necessary. Let me bring the photo. I will type in picture and I'll select this photo. I'll just go to the right view and hit zero, enter, okay? Then I will draw a curve as a reference because I know the size for this model. As you can see that this camera, we don't really have a front view or left view or top view of this. Instead of having those three views, we have this kind of perspective rendering. Well, you're gonna ask me why we use this as a reference. Actually, in the real work, a lot of time, you don't really have those views. Rather, you have a rendering or sketch from the designer, or you are the designer. So I think it's nice to use this kind of perspective drawing as our reference to train us to adapt this kind of ability uh, in terms of having 3D imagination based on only one drawing. So first, let's come over here and select this tool called line from the midpoint. I will select zero and draw a curve. I'll type in 50 and hit enter. Okay. Again, I will choose the center. I'll type in 15 and hit enter. So this two curve showcase uh, section size for this device. I'll come over here and type in ref curve. Let's change the color to red bring those two curves into the layer, and then I will scale those, uh, this photo based on those two curves. I'll move this point to the end, up in scale, hit enter. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the perspective and uh, set this back a little bit, lock it, go to the right view again. So when I'm drawing curves, it's not gonna interact with this surface, right? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a cross section for this uh, device. And uh, I will set this as our master layer or current layer. I will choose curve tool and draw four points. First one, two, three, four. And I will turn off the orthogonal and draw another three points. Okay. I will change this shape a little bit. Then I'll mirror this curve on the center. Then I will join them together. Again, I will change the section a little bit. Select those two points in a little bit. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to draw this curve again with those points as reference. Make sure that you unselect those near or end or mid over all snap because a lot of time it's going to be on your way. You will see what I'm talking about right now. So basically I will use those control points to draw our curve again. Why I'm doing that? Because remember we joined the center earlier. Even we join them together this kind of disconnection will always exist in this geometry. So it's gonna be very hard for us to draw some very perfect surface in the next few steps. So I'm gonna explode this and uh, the one I just draw cannot be exploded, right, for sure. I will delete those two curves and let's change the degree of this curve. Let's to first, let's check the degree of it. Let's do rebuild. Okay, it says, Point count is 13 and degree is three degrees. I don't want that. I don't want to change it here. I want to cancel by using the rebuild tool. I just want to read the condition instead of really trying to rebuild anything. So I'm going to come over here and uh, select this tool called change degree. I'll type in five and hit enter. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the central point a little bit, move it up a little bit. Make sure that those three points on the top, they're not gonna do anything crazy. 
next thing I'm going to introduce to you is a tool called Polar Array. You will see what it's doing in a second. You will select access and then start off with polar access and the end and hit and type in 10. Hit OK. So basically, it rotate and copy these lines 10 times in this direction. So I'm going to use this as a loft sections. So I would have in loft, choose this curve, choose them one by one. It's kind of annoying. But you have to do it with this order and hit enter, select closed loft, and hit OK. Then I will make a new layer called surf. Set it as the current layer. Bring the surface to our new layer and hide those reference curves so they are not going to be on our way. Actually, then I'm going to send this photo back a little bit, lock it again, go to the front view, select the surface from the control points, then do something crazy. I'll select all those control points on the corners. Use this tool and scale it in this direction. Okay. Also, I will scale it in this direction a little bit. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select those control points here. Again, scale them a little bit. Make sure that you are not going to overlap those with those points because then it will be very chaotic. It's going to be very hard if you want to tweak anything in the future. So, and let's go back to the shaded mode. Okay, this is what we have right now. The next thing is very tricky. I'm going to try to select all those control points here, right, on this direction. And of course, the center point here and also those rings of control points. Well, actually, it's very hard to do so. Uh, one way to do it is actually go to the front view. Uh, I will select everything. But then you know that the other side has also been selected. So I just hold control and just deselect all those points. And then I'll go to the front view and move them. So this looks all right to me. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some new reference curves. I'm going to make a new layer, just call new ref curve. Well, actually, I'll just change this one to trash. OK. Also, I'll change it to red, just easier to see. Go to the front view, and I'll draw a circle here. Type in the radius 15. And also, I will draw a curve, use orthogonal. Set the curve length as 22. And then here, set the curve length as 20. OK, I'm going to bring this. Perfect. And then I'm going to select those points again. This time, let's use a new way. Let me select the center points first, and then I'll hold Shift. I'll select this point. Come over here. Use select this triangle thing, and then come over here and choose select U. And then you will select all the points on the U direction. We are going to use this tool a lot. So I'm going to just select this and take the whole toolbar, stick it here, OK? Because we're going to use it all the time. I'm going to go to the front view. Again, I'm going to select those control points on this direction also. I'll hold Shift. And then I will choose U, and uh, I will move them around. Trying to go to the center of this uh, reference curve. Change to perspective and hit OK. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually I am going to come over here, choose split, and uh, choose ISO curve, shrink, hit yes, and then go to the front view again, use this circle we just draw as a reference, and hit OK. 
So I'm going to delete this surface, go to the front view. All right, it's pretty good. That's what we want. The next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to turn on the control points again. Remember, we have to shrink this control points. If you didn't, when you were using split, you can come over here and uh, choose shrink trimmed surface, right? We explained this in our last tutorial a lot. So I'm going to come back here, turn on the control points, select those control points. Again, I was like this one, this one, and then use U. Then I'm going to drag this out. Okay. Actually, this is too flat on the top. So I'm going to come over here, turn on the control points, select this point, U, and then send it back a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is actually look at here. It has this kind of forehead on the design. So I'm going to try to mimic this by using the similar way, which is control the points. So I'm going to come over here. And you can see that there are simply too many control points here. So I can delete some of them. I'll select this one, choose select you, and just hit delete. Okay, so this makes the top part pretty flat. And then I'm going to select some of the top points. Select those three and those three. Now I'm going to start to drag them again and make them a little bit flat and move them forward more. So and move them forward a little bit more. Okay, now it's closer. All right, we can take a look. So perfect. So actually this is what we want. And then I'm gonna just change those shapes a little bit more by setting up those control points. Select you. And actually I can scale them. Also I will select the other ring. Make them a little bit fat here. This part on the top moves them up a little bit. Again, we are just trying to mimic this kind of relationship here, okay? So I think this is pretty satisfactory based on this one image. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna come over here, bring this curve to the front and rebuild the curve. Change it to 10 counts and a five degree. Why is that? Well, we will see in a second. Let's check this surface and type in rebuild and check. In the U direction, it says 10 control points and degree is three and five. We need to change that, okay? So basically in the U direction is 10 control points and the degree is three. This is not okay. We should make the degree five to match with this curve, the reference curve we just made. So I'm gonna cancel this here. So I'm gonna clear all the joints and then cancel. Again, we are just using this rebuild tool to read the point count and the degree counts. Hit pencil, and I will select this surface, come over here and choose change degree again. New U degree, I'll type in five, hit okay. V degree is already five, so perfect. Next, I'm gonna repeat this again and it says U direction has 10 point counts and the degree is five. Okay, so this is good. Let's turn on the control points again and let's turn on the control points on this curve again. See they have the same amount of control points. But right now there is this degree uh, shift. So I'm gonna rotate this. 90 degree, okay. And then we turn on the control points here, on the control points on this curve also, right? And then I'm gonna drag those control points on the surface to the curve so we can make this a perfect circle. In order to do so, we should select both of the objects first and then show object control points. I'll select this one. I'll type in M, which is move. 
from this point to this point, from this point, drag it to this point, so on and so forth. Again, don't make a mistake. Don't drag the red one to the black one here, okay? Okay, so that's why we change the uh, reference color here to red, so to make it obvious. Okay, hit enter or escape. Perfect. Next, let's take a look of the control points. Well, they are on a perfect ring right now. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the control points again and uh, add another rings of control points here, okay? In order to do so, I will come over here and uh, select insert knot. So I'll just add another ring here, hit okay. And this curve, we go to the front view, we copy and paste, make a new curve, Zoom in a little bit, go to the front view, set it back. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn on the control points of this again. Well, it's very confusing right now, right? So there are two layers of control points are very close to each other. In order to hide every control points on the rest of the surface, there is one thing we can do. First, I will select this point here and I will choose select you, right? And then I'm going to come over here, select invert selection. I'm going to select everything other than these rings of control points. And then I'm going to come over to the command line, type in hide PT, okay? So what we all have left here is just those control points that we just selected. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this curve and then turn on the control points. And then we cannot make any mistake, right? We can just keep repeating what we did earlier. We can select those uh, points to the red points. Okay. And his escape. Perfect. And then let's turn on the control points again. The next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to repeat this process again. I'll go to the front view. I'll copy and paste this circle again. Scale it a little bit. And set it back. And then I'm going to drag the other ring of control points here. Again, I'll do it again if you want to hide everything else. First, I'll turn on the control points. And then I'll select this ring of control points by using sync call select you. And then I'll come over to the top, choose invert selection and type in hide PT, okay? So everything we have left is this ring of control points. And then I'll select this curve, choose show object control points and then drag them. Actually, it's easier to do it on the front view. Another tip is that since our last command is move, so we can select this object and then hit space. We can just keep using the last command. Okay. And then I will hit escape. I'll turn on the control points again. See, we have this beautiful rings of control points. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and adjust this a little bit. See, there's some obvious mistake here. Let's see what's going on. I made some mistake here. Let's select those two objects first and then choose turn on the control points. This point, I didn't match them. I will drag them again. Same as the one on top. Okay, so now it's pretty good. Let me show the control points again. Go to the front view. Well, now I don't see any mistakes. Yes, now it's all checked. So again, it's very easy to make some mistakes here, but in order to keep the smoothness of the surface or continuity, this is something very necessary for us to do. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to adjust this overall shape one more time. 
So I will select this ring of control points, set it back a little bit. Well, it looks all right to me. Okay. This ring of control points, set it back a little bit. And then I am going to select this object, choose split again, and choose ISO curve. I try to draw a circle here as perfect as possible. Go to the front view. If your circle is not very good, that means your control points are not very smooth. Okay, so you need to adjust your control points here. You see here, well, it's, it's good enough. I did okay. Sometimes you have to check the control points or drag the control points on the exterior rings also. But this time, uh, because we did it in a very nice way, so we don't have to. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna select both of the object, come over here and select shrink trimmed surface. Turn on the control points here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On this direction, it is good, but on this direction, it's not good. So I'm going to rebuild them, change it to 10, 5, okay, and 8, 5. Hit OK. So I will select this surface, turn on the control points. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to isolate this object, and uh, I will turn on the control points. Remember we talked about last time, in order to keep the continuity between this surface and the rest of the surface, we cannot move those three rings of control points. So we're just going to drag this ring. First, select one point, select U, and then drag them in. I am going to shrink them a little bit. I will hold Shift, scale them a little bit, make them a little bit smaller. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this point, choose Select you again, and then again, I'm gonna scale them down a little bit. Move them back. Okay. Also, I am gonna run the control points here. Select this ring, choose you, and then scale them down a little bit to make this section a little bit smoother. Right, but it's okay. We can keep adjusting them later. And let's check the continuity. We can join them together. Type in the zebra. You are gonna expect to see some breaking points here. It's very easy to fix it. We can just explode them and type in match surface. Select those two. And then I will just choose curvature. The other side, we don't even have another end, so it doesn't matter. So match edge by closest points. They are actually on the same edge, so I'll just hit OK. And then let's join them in together. Zebra again. You can see that this edge are very well connected. OK, so let me change the surface as our current layer again. Turn off the rest of the image. I'll come over here, select rendered mode. I'll come over here, select shaded, hide all those ISO curves and uh, the surface edge, right? This is a very smooth object. As far as in this direction, this looks very decent. That's it. That's the first part for our camera project. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.